Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the 2024 Kawasaki Terex 4S SE. It's a complicated name, but this is the first one we're having a look at that is a 2024 model. Now, normally we film in front of Kawasaki Way, and we do have that on the thumbnail, but they're doing some trail maintenance here. And if you don't know what Kawasaki Way is, I am filming here at Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. This is the number one volume Kawasaki dealer in the country, and Kawasaki Way is the world famous test track that they have here at the dealership. So, like I said, normally I film in front of that entrance there but they're filming there. So we're gonna go around this vehicle here. And what I'm gonna to try to do is show you a number of things that the other videos don't show you to help you make sense of what this is. This is only one of the models that's in. We'll be reviewing the other models as well. So if you have questions on this 2024 model, make sure you let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe because I will answer those comments and questions in future comments, but also in future videos because I have complete access to the entire Kawasaki lineup here at Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. So what have we got here? Let's get into that right now. So the biggest difference you're gonna notice between the 2024 and the 2023 is the color scheme. In the past, you could get various pieces of this color scheme, but we're also gonna dig into things other videos aren't showing you. So let's just co cover the color scheme really quickly. You got a little bit more red here. There is a metallic look to the paint here. Definitely still a metallic look to the black here. I'll flash on the screen what that color is because I don't remember how to say it all off the top of my head here, but you used to be able to get this red crash bar. This is a standard piece on this model. You used to be able to get that on the SE, but the SE had more white color in here. So now you're seeing red on red, and that's probably a pretty cool look. Up person, it definitely looks like an updated version, something that's different. There's also some cool color schemes in the other trim line. So again, we'll show you that in a second. But what do we have here? Well, this one happens to be the four passenger version of this Terex model. So the four passenger version shares a wheelbase with the two passenger version, but it has a shorter bed and gives you those rear seats. What's cool about that is, although the spec sheet says this is a little bit longer, it's really just the overhang of the bed. And what you end up with is something that is very very trail capable. Now filming here in New Brunswick, Canada, you have a lot of trails that this is just perfect for. And you haven't got something with a crazy extended wheelbase that, that allows this to go just about anywhere. Now, just a few weeks ago, I reviewed the base model of this. It happened to be the 2023 version, but this one has a lot of upgrades over that. And some of the interesting upgrades are things like you know, a two inch larger wheel with a one inch larger overall tire. You've also got about two or more inches of suspension travel extra on this. Now that should lead to more ground clearance, but it kind of does and it kind of doesn't. If you have the preload set sort of to a softer setting, you actually have the same ground clearance on this as the base model. Usually you would uh, you know, set it up for an extra inch of ground clearance, but why if there's two inches of extra suspension travel, and an inch of extra wheel, is there only an inch of extra ground clearance? Well, let's talk about that right now. So we're gonna cover suspension in a couple different shots here. First thing you're gonna notice is a bit of a rounded profile to these front wheels. That's what you want. And a bit more of a square profile to the rear wheels. So again, a square profile on the rear wheels. This one's obviously a little bit narrower than the rear wheels uh, and a little bit different size overall. But again, diameter, same thing. And then every Terex has really good suspension in here. It's Fox shocks uh, adjustable. So we're gonna talk about that in one second. But one thing you're gonna notice as well is they've carved out a little extra ground clearance in the way the A-arm is set up here. So where it used to kind of come down as a straight line, that would rob ground clearance. Now you've got the ground clearance up. We're gonna talk about brakes in this one. You've got disc brakes on the front. Obviously the braided steel lines are gonna give you a lot of toughness. On something like a motorcycle, they do that for feel. On here, they're gonna give you some toughness in there on the front. We're gonna talk about the rear brakes as well because they're really unique on this unit and work really well for the purpose of this vehicle. But now let's bring the camera around to this angle and we'll start talking about the suspension and the difference between this one and the more base model that we talked about a few weeks ago. All right, so they're just uh, doing some trail maintenance, as we said. So if you hear a little bit of uh, machinery in the background, don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's all off camera. All right, let's look at this front suspension here. Now on the base model, you have the 1.5 version. This is the 2.0. The 1.5 is in the front. The 2.0 is in the rear of the base model. This is 2.0 front and rear, but you have extra suspension travel. So if you have extra suspension travel, but you don't have any more ground clearance, what's going on? Well, what this does is it allows the wheel to move down and up further. So you have more wheel travel, even if it's not directly into uh, overall ground clearance. So the the biggest difference that that makes for you is you're going to always keep your wheels in contact with the ground on various terrains or at least a lot more terrain and of course if you know if you've been off-road 
that's going to give you the traction you need. As soon as you start lifting wheels or anything like that, you're gonna have less traction than you need going down. Now you also have a preload adjustment here and that's how you can adjust that ride height as well as the overall feel. So you have the preload adjustment on all four corners and you have compression and rebound damping as well, uh, which can be spun over here. So you've got a lot going on here. And then why would you have piggyback shocks? Well, piggyback shocks, anytime you have a shock compressing and coming in and out a lot, you create some heat. Once you create some heat in there, you have a less effective uh, shock. So as you're bouncing up and down quite a bit, you're going to have a shock that can become less effective unless you have a piggyback shock. What this does is moves that hotter oil over outside of there and allows for a consistent ride no matter what the ter terrain is. So you've got really high end uh, suspension here. And again, that extra travel on this model here, and that is combined with electronic power steering. Let's talk about that right now. So I actually misspoke. I said electronic power steering. That's a common thing and I shouldn't say it. It should be just electric power steering. You see the sticker right here. So what is different about the electric power steering here? Well, first of all, it is a speed sensitive electric power steering. And what that means is at higher speeds, it sort of stiffens up and keeps it feeling like it should, but at lower speeds, it's a little extra assistance and that makes your steering feel consistent. And that's important because when you go off road, you need a little bit of extra assistance in those tight, slower speed type maneuvers where your wheels are really jammed in the mud or the dirt or you're dealing with rocks, you have that extra assistance when you need it, when you're not moving very quickly, and then it sort of backs off that assistance a little bit as you get going, which gives you a more natural steering feel. So really smart system. Again, they understand how you're using this unit. Now let's, again, while we're looking at the whole vehicle, talk about the frame and construction. A lot of people don't talk about the construction of a vehicle like this. It's got a double X frame underneath. If you were to see this in the air, there's uh, pictures on the Kawasaki website as well that show you the frame underneath. So that double X kind of frame, that X frame in general, is something that you see in the automotive industry in convertibles. So that allows you to have strength without a roof structure. Of course, this still has a very solid crash bar type structure over top. So even without that, you've got a very stiff and strong unit. So that does a few things for you. That allows for precise suspension tuning. It allows you to dial in the suspension tuning so you'll have less flex in the overall vehicle, which means your suspension can do the work and do the job that it's supposed to do. But it also gives you something that is very safe, a very strong, uh, safe, uh, structure so you've got really good control really good strength overall this model here does have the roof that's an option on lower trim levels but of course that's standard here keeps the sun off you gives you a little bit of extra you know protection from anything that you're going around leaves and branches that kind of thing of course the crash bars are still there no matter what but you've got the um, roof there as well let's go to the back we'll talk about some of the rear suspension and braking unit that is really unique on this unit as well so taking a look at the rear here, you've got a lot going on. So again, a little bit more square profile to this wider rear tire. So diameter is the same as the front, but you've got a, a wider tire and a different profile. Of course, the wheels that don't steer, that's what you want to give you great traction. So overall, great profile there. Moving into the suspension, again, same thing you have as the front. 10.7 and 10 inches of travel front and rear, so you've got good suspension travel. And again, it's not all about coming up, it's also about dipping down. So if you have a big, undulation when it comes kind of down and out this will still drop down and hang into that uh, hole so that you can still dig yourself out with traction adjustable for compression over here preload over there so you've got good adjustability everything is all set up very well and then as you move inboard you've got the brakes there are no disc brakes or wheel brakes in here so we saw on the front that you have that um, uh, braided steel line which again helps with feel on something like a motorcycle but here it's about being tough over in the back you've got even more tough type things. You've got a system that is braked in there. So it's a wet brake. It's inside of the unit there, not out of the wheels. What that means is no matter how buried in mud and debris and everything else you are, you've got a brake that is consistent in its performance. It doesn't really require, doesn't really require any real maintenance from you. And it's out of the dirt, out of the mud, out of all the stuff that you're going to run into, out of sticks and other stuff digging in there. So you've got that built into the center. So you've got a suspension system that allows your wheels to come up and down. It adjusts for both comfort and performance. And that's one thing to keep in mind. The key thing of a suspension, the key point of a suspension is not comfort. It's to keep your wheels in contact with the ground and comfort would be secondary. You can adjust this for comfort, but you can also adjust this to really keep contact with the ground at any speed on any terrain, which is really nice. Then you got the brake that's hidden in there. And then you'll notice there's a hitch down there. So that hitch tows up to 1300 pounds. This is still useful for work, even though it's designed and set up for fun. So you've got a real good practical uh, piece here. And as we move up from this shot, we're going to take a look at the bed and talk about some more practicality right now. 
So as we take a look at the bed here, this is a bit of a compromised unit. Remember, you can get a two-seater, which doesn't have these uh, seats in here, and allows you to have a longer bed, which will carry some extra weight. This one, because it's set up for the extra uh, rear seats right there, allows you to have a shorter bed. There's no tailgate or anything here, so it's just got a lip in here. Now, you can mount accessories in there. If you want to enclose this box in, you can do that. There's all kinds of things, but even if you just leave it as is, it's got four tie-downs, one in every corner, that allows you to strap down a cooler, strap down anything you need, and it's got a 250 pound capacity right here which makes some sense it's beyond your rear axle that kind of thing but 250 pounds is all you're going to need in this size plus your towing capacity plus you can still put a bunch of weight in the front here or in the middle section here in these rear seats so good practical bed simple durable you got the lights both on on both sides there so practical simple gives you the capability to have a fun unit but also take along your stuff and do some work if you needed to with this unit now let's take a look at the rear seats so the most important thing to point out about the rear seats is that even though this is a shorter wheelbase unit than many other four doors, you want that short wheelbase because it's maneuverable. As you jump in here, you have all the space you need. So you can see here, I've got plenty of foot space here and in down there, there's a drain. So while you have a grippy floor, there's lots of drains there. So if mud comes in, you're totally fine. You shut this down and you've got this big bar across here, which allows you to really have grip and it's got stadium seating. So stadium seating sits me above the driver's seat. It has a headrest back here, but it's set way back. Why is it way back? Because as I have a helmet on, it's got room for that helmet to then sit and hit that headrest like that. So seats are about two things here. Obviously they're about style, they're about comfort, they're also about safety. So if you're driving in this for a long time and bouncing around, that kind of thing, you're gonna want something that supports you from side to side laterally, and it has good side to side grip that comes right up your back. It's comfortable down on the bottom. And then of course the materials, they're good for waterproof. They're just, you know, they get wet, they wipe off. And you've got a good seating position that's comfortable that you can move around in. You've got cup holders beside you with another slot beside me here. We'll show you that in a little bit later when we jump inside through the front side there. But overall, rear seat space is perfectly fine. I have this set up for someone that could be taller than me. It's all the way back, and I still have the knee room I need. I sit square in here, and of course, tons of headroom with a helmet no matter what. So you have an open air feeling here. This little area here can hit your shoulder there if you were really get, to get aggressive, but you're really not gonna have to worry about that because the seats themselves hold you in place. And of course, there's shoulder belts on every seating position. So you're properly belted in when you wanna be uh, into this unit. It works really well. Rear seat's really comfortable. Let's check out the front seat now. So we'll take a look at the front seat. I guess realize that it's probably just easier to show you the back seat just like this while I've got the sort of camera in my hand here. You do have a 12 volt port right there. There's a little extra uh, storage spot there, right there for the rear seats. But really what I was pointing out between the seats here is the cup holders and that large space back there for the other debris. You can see there's little holes in there as well. So if you get things wet, you are able to drip them out. And the same thing with the floor over here. Whoops, if I can get the camera to do what I want to do. There we go. You can see there are some drain holes in that well-gripped floor. And again, and it's not just the overall grip with the uh, big pieces. There's lots of fine little uh, diamonds in there as well that give you some good traction for, you know, slippery conditions and the typical kind of off-road uh, scenarios that you're going to find. So we mentioned this area here with that little handrail bar to help climb in also can be used against your shoulder. On the driver's side, because your hands are on the wheel, you have, and so does the passenger, an extra little uh, rubber coating on there that gives you a little extra padding. Again, you probably aren't gonna run into that because the side bolstering in the seat is very good, uh, but you do have that there. So that's uh, kind of helpful there. Let's jump into the overall driver's environment. So this one, of course, being the top of the line, you have the really nice stereo system here. So you can see those extra speakers in there. And again, if you look at the review I did of the 2023 base model, of course, those things aren't in there. But basically what is in common with all of them, same thing with the floor over there, you have a dead pedal here and pedals there. On the passenger side, if we go right across there, you have the double dead pedal. My red helmet down there is on the floor, but the double dead pedal. So you've got a good, comfortable seating position for the passenger. And you can see, again, speakers everywhere, glove box, in there simple display which is reliable so we're going to talk about that in a second here let's go fully wide angle for a second as i jump in there is a tilt and telescopic steering wheel because i'm holding the camera i'm not going to be able to move it for you it's got a pretty good spring to it but you can see this area here is something that i can uh, adjust and move it up and down but it's pull that it's really a two-handed job so we're going to leave that as is and we're going to turn the key to the on position actually you know what we're going to start it right up here so foot on the brake and again I am wearing a mic so it's going to mic me a little bit better than the motor I hope but I don't think you'll have an issue this has for whatever reason no glare from the angle I'm sitting at but when you look at it with a camera with one eye versus myself with two eyes you see more glare so I'm going to try to move to an angle where you can sort of see 
a little less glare here, if I can do this correctly. There we go. Uh, there we go. So in this display, again, is it a simple display? Yes. Is it reliable? Yes. Two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, again, that uh, sort of blacked out means two-wheel drive. When they black out the front area there, that shows it's in four-wheel drive. What I like about that is it doesn't just switch because you switch this right here. We'll see if it does or not. So there's four-wheel drive. Yeah, it switched right in. But if that four-wheel drive doesn't light up and the switch is changed, what that means is that although you've changed the switch, it hasn't quite engaged. Sometimes you need to roll forward or back to have it engaged. So you know for sure if you're in four-wheel drive based on that display. Left side is uh, seat belt warning, parking brake warning, neutral light, and there's other warnings in there as well. The odometer's showing right now, but you've got trip A, trip B, you've got an hour meter there as well, and back to the odometer. So I'm not sure if you saw all that there, but that's what we've got going on there. So simple controls here, and then another 12 volt port. Remember we had one in the back of the center console. There's one in the front here as well, and your stereo system here is easy to adjust. We'll just turn it up for a second here. Uh, see if we can get some volume out of it here. I can hear it already now, but again, I am mic'd. All right, a little bit of Luke Combs. If I play it too long, it'll uh, black me out for playing too much music, but there is a nice stereo system in there. You also have a winch here on the front. We're gonna go take another look at the front in a second here, but we're gonna show you the controls first here. The other thing we should show you is inner and outer headlights. So we'll just zoom into there, inner and outer headlights. So what this is, is they're off right now. You have a low beam on the outer lights and a high beam on the outer lights, and the same with a low beam and a high beam there. You can kill them both like that. So we're gonna show you that on the outside in a second here when we come back there. We'll go fully wide angle again down here. And you can see overall simple stuff here. We've got a neutral reverse uh, high and low gearing there. So you have low range gearing if you want it, of course. You've got the manual parking brake right up close there. And then this, a lot of people wonder what that is if you've never been in one. This is simply just a handle to hang on to. So you've got a handle to hang on to if you're a passenger up here. You've got the other one up there. The driver's side, of course, doesn't have that handle here. We'll come around to the driver's side right over here. No handle there because they'll be holding onto the wheels. So lots of places to hold on. Again, there's that bar for the rear seats that goes all the way across here in the center of your screen right over here. That is for rear seat passengers to hold on to. So everybody's got a good place to hold on to in addition to having a very comfortable seat here. So really good stuff. Again, this is a wide angle camera, so it's gonna skew the shot just a little bit but this is a really practical four person vehicle. And uh, you know, let's just flip it around and show you what I look like. So when I'm filming cars, I kind of give this view here again, tons and tons of headroom. So no matter what you are, I'm about six feet tall and you can certainly be a lot taller than me with a helmet. I mean, tons and tons of space there. And then if you take a look down here as well, very good control, small steering wheel there, which is kind of nice. Uh, again, it is tilt, uh, tilt adjustable, so you can put it where you want. And again, nice rub rubbery feel, thick grip and the extra bulges in the sections there. So you know, no matter what way you're steering, you'll know exactly where you need it. So very comfortable seating position, very upright seating position and a very commanding view as well, which I really like. Let's step back out to the front and show you a couple of those little things. We talked about the lighting, the winch, that kind of thing. So staying at the front here, taking a look here, you don't just have a winch, you have a worn winch. So then again, brand name stuff, quality components out there. And I wanna show you those headlights as we turn the vehicle back to the on position, or at least without starting it, we'll turn it to the on position here. And we'll show you the headlights. Now again, we're not lined up correctly to see them, but we'll go to the outside lights. There's a low beam and a high beam there. So you can see these outboard lights here. Uh, low beam is the, or sorry, low beam is the high, the high beam adds the lower there. So you can add that there. And then you can do the same thing with your extra light. So no matter how much lighting you need, you don't have to really add extra lighting in order to be able to see in front of you. You've got the ability to have quality LED lighting built in. Now, if you wanna add a light bar or something like that, you've got this crash bar in here, a great place to add that. You can also, of course, add them in other spots there. But good lighting right off the bat. Again, that base level trim we had didn't have the LED lights and didn't have the um, more than just a single light. So again, the dual lights instead of the quad lights uh, on that lower trim level. So you're adding, adding, adding but you're adding things that really you would add in the aftermarket. They're coming here from the factory. So let's talk about who this vehicle is for. Well, of course, the Terex is also available in not a four. Just a, this is a Terex 4S. You can get a Terex 4 or a Terex without the four, which would be a two passenger, which gives you a longer bed. No matter which one you get, you've got something that is a very um, practical trail type unit. It's very comfortable for at least two people. And of course, adding four people here. The other thing that this thing is really good with is you've got Kawasaki's V-twin around 800cc engine. And that is a great engine with that mid to low range torque with the CVT transmission. A lot of people like, like to 
beat on CVTs for cars, and I get that sometimes uh, they're not the most favorite to drive. But in an off-road vehicle, in this with this kind of speed range that you're dealing with, it's actually really good because both the engine can rev at different speeds and the transmission can vary, and they're both infinitely avail available, right? So you have a not a stepped gearing thing where you're in a little bit too high of a gear or too low of gear. The transmission can adapt while keeping the engine at the same RPM. What that does is allows you to have great torque where you need it. The engine senses what's going or the system senses what's going on and gives you the torque you need. So you can hold that engine at a high uh, RPM rev range and allow the transmission to move instead of having the engine drop in and out of its high torque area. So really good system there. And again, when we talk about who this is for, this is for four people to get out and have a great time. But if you just take two people, it's still very practical. The two seater has a deep storage well here. Well, that's just your foot wells over here in the, uh, in the four seater. So you still got a lot of practicality. These seats do not fold down. I've been asked that in the past. You would need to separate your gear front and rear if you just had two people here, but it is very practical and with that shorter wheelbase. Now the SE model, so the Terex 4 S SE does add a few nice things. It adds a little bit of style with the aluminum rims type uh, down here, but it also has a lot of practicality. You have the extra suspension travel. Like I mentioned, the wheels are an inch taller than that very base model, uh, but you also have that extra travel. So that allows it to not just come up, but also to come down into those holes to keep your traction. And it also is very good for comfort. You've got a good adjustability in the suspension. Lighting's very good. The worn winch I think is really important. Uh, obviously you can add it on trim levels that don't have one, but it's something that I almost would for sure add to a vehicle like this for the type of driving that I do because I'm probably going to find myself somewhere where I got a little stuck and I need a little help getting out and the winch is super helpful with that. That's all standard on here so you can leave with this without even having to add any accessories and you've got everything you need up front. Now of course you can accessorize these up in all kinds of different ways so you can talk to your salesperson to see what kinds of things you can put on that. But if you want to know what it's like to get on the trail, we're going to do a future driving review on Kawasaki Way. That's that off-road trail here at Jim, Bil Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. And if you're anywhere near here, that's what you have to do. You have to come try this out. You can compare the differences between the different trim lines and see which one's best for you. I can tell you right now that there's pretty good value in this uh, model with the electronic power steering that varies, the, the CVT with the... Uh, the power that varies, it really keeps it what you need, keeps the power where you need it. Uh, then again, all the extra accessories on this is exactly how I would equip it up. And for four people, whether they're full-size adults or whether they're kids and, and adults, you can take them in here, they can see out, they can have a blast. This thing is an absolute blast for the trails. So 2024s have arrived. Like I said, there's other trim lines of this Terex 4 that's here. There's the KRX 1000 that's also here, 2024s. If you're interested in any of the 2024 Kawasaki lineup, make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you let me know in the comments below. This is the first 2024 I've done. There will be more. So let me know the kinds of things you want to see with them and I'll make sure I can get them uh, like I said, answer your questions both in the comment section and in future videos. I want to thank Jim Gilbert's Power Sports for giving me complete access to their lineup and for being able to film right near Kawasaki Way, which also runs in behind here as well. And uh, like I said, we'll have that in the future. Thanks everybody for watching.